The Creality CR Scan Lizard. Let's take a look. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I know absolutely nothing about 3D scanning. Honestly, I've never even seen a 3D scanner before, never mind used one. So when Creality asked me to review their 3D scanner, I very nearly said no. I mean, what can I possibly tell you guys about something I know nothing about? But then I thought to myself, maybe this puts me in an ideal position. Many of you guys may well be thinking of buying a 3D scanner for the first time. You might be wondering, are they easy to use? Do they do a good job? Is the software confusing? Is it all a load of hype? And are these things really worth the money? Well, thanks to Creality, hopefully I may be in a position to help you decide for yourselves. And here it is, or rather, here is a splendid looking carry case. Inside, everything is very neatly packed, and it has the feeling of a high-end piece of equipment, which I suppose it is. Despite looking a little daunting, it's actually surprisingly easy to put together, and just involves inserting a few cables and plugging the device into your PC or laptop via a standard USB connection. And that last part is critical. If you're nowhere near a computer, or if you haven't got a laptop, then this unit will be no use to you at all. You will need that processing power just to see what's going on. You'll see what I mean in a moment. There's a horrible paper pamphlet that contains a simple set of instructions to get you going. Alternatively, there's a USB drive which contains the same instructions in a much friendlier PDF format, along with a few demonstration videos. I was particularly excited by this chap who's going to tell us how to use the scanner. Let's just watch it for a moment. No, no, don't adjust the volume. Trust me, it's at full pelt. Ah, yes, it's going to be subtitles. What? Hang on. You're, you're going a bit fast. What the... F okay, Creality, it's a pretty useless demonstration video. Fortunately, all you need to worry about is installing the software from the USB stick. Once it's up and running, I'd advise you to turn it off and on again. As for me, upon installation, it seemed to jump in halfway through something. So turning it off and then on gives you a nice clean slate to work from. You'll be given an initial choice of table or hand scanning, and we'll start with table. Initially, the new work area looks quite daunting, with various things to click and select. Luckily, there's a large, friendly blue button that says Preview. So that's the place to start. With your scanner pointing roughly at your turntable, which should hopefully be spinning at this point, click the preview button. Now, looking at your PC or laptop screen, the main central window is a wash of blue color. And this is the focus of the scanner. At the top right hand corner, there's a smaller black and white image that gives you a better idea of what the scanner is looking at. So, in essence, this preview stage allows you to line up your scanner, and I'm personally aiming just a little above dead center of the turntable. With that done, the large friendly button says stop, so let's give it a click. Now the big friendly button says initial, and having not bothered reading the instructions because I'm lazy, I made a leap of logic thinking to myself that maybe the scanner needs to scan the turntable first. Think about it. If you want to scan something on a turntable, then knowing the size and shape of the turntable will allow the scanning software to deduct that scan from your chosen object. So I clicked the initial button and everything turned red. But actually, this was a sign that my logic was correct for once. Personally, I let the turntable spin for a full 360 degrees before I hit the big friendly stop button. And maybe this is a little over the top, but so far doing this has not let me down. 
Now our big friendly button says scan and for the very first object I decided to have a go at 3D scanning everyone's favourite Disney character Winnie the shit, or Winnie the Pooh as he's more informally known. Making sure not to move the turntable I placed Winnie fairly centrally and then clicked scan. After a few seconds of thought the scanner got to work and after a full turn of the table came to a stop. Now we have a new friendly button saying process and I can't resist its allure. I followed along agreeably clicking it until the option was given to save Winnie as an OBJ or STL file. I opted for STL. Ok it looks pretty crappy on the screen but let's look at the STL in ZBrush. Now come on that's not bad. It's not perfect there's a few scraggy bits but personally it would take me days to try and sculpt something like this and with all this said we can still do better. We now have three big friendly buttons and so I decided to click append. I chose to go through the setup steps once again in case I'd knocked the turntable. So I clicked one giving me preview and then two giving me initial. I then lay Winnie down on his side and clicked scan. The software prompted me to save the file so of course I did. I then selected scan again and scanned Winnie's back, the top of his head and of course his bare behind. With the overwhelming sense of power that I was now feeling I hit append again, lay Winnie on his other side and clicked scan once more. Looking at the data panel I now had four files to process, the initial scan, a fusion of the two and then two more new scans. I clicked process but only the last two scans were selected. So I cancelled and manually selected everything except the fusion scan. Things were looking messy on the screen but I opted to process anyway. The software asked me if the effect was reasonable and it was hard to tell as this window was blocking the view. An annoyance that can be rectified by dragging the questioning window out of the way. And if you ignore the red areas which should vanish things were looking pretty good. So I clicked next. If you haven't already figured this out the software is very cleverly realigning the various scans and repositioning them into what it thinks is the correct orientation. But like all things software the automatic alignment doesn't always work. Sometimes it's necessary to manually reorientate these objects and Archum on the demo video seems to relish demonstrating how this works with the bust on a bust. So far possibly because I'm extra generous with the initial scans this hasn't been an issue for me. And look at the end result. That is very good. Certainly better than I could personally sculpt and this is now of course in STL format where I can 3D print it or even amend it using CAD software. And really this was very easy to do even for someone who had never used a 3D scanner before. In my excitement I decided to have a go at scanning this tiger. If you look closely you can see there's an actual grain to this model. Now there's two scanning options I haven't mentioned so far geometry and texture. I wasn't too sure what these were so I asked the friendly chap on the demo videos but he was too busy showing me his handbag collection. However it was enough of a hint for me to guess that geometry is about shapes maybe and texture is about well texture. So I decided to scan the tiger separately using both these features to see what happens. A quick health warning message here. In texture mode the scanner emits a strobe lighting effect which could certainly be hazardous to anyone with photosensitive conditions. So this is the tiger in geometry mode. This is the tiger in texture mode. Yes I can't tell the difference either. My guess is this grain is too fine to be picked up by the scanner. It's probably less than a millimetre deep 
And whilst that's okay for our eyes to see, home-grade 3D scanners might struggle, it seems. I think larger textural changes, like maybe a pineapple or similar, are probably better suited for this test. So I'll stick to geometry from here on. One very strange thing, though, is the stripes. Notice how they seem raised and embossed? They certainly aren't on the original, they're just painted on. But it does highlight a common issue with 3D scanners, and that's colour. Light colours, dark colours, and especially reflective surfaces can have an effect on 3D scanners, distorting finished results. For that reason, many professionals often spray objects in a uniform matte colour to prevent these problems. But these ornaments belong to my wife, and as I'm not stupid, I won't be spraying them. This is a Game Boy, which the pre-internet generation will be fascinated to see. It has a shiny reflective screen, shiny red buttons, a textured shiny black control button, a slightly textured semi-gloss grey body, voids, black dials, and slots galore. In essence, it's a scanner's nightmare. And the scanner did struggle at first, but through varying placement angles, I was able to achieve this, which I think is pretty good, considering all the points that I've mentioned. I strongly suspect a plain matte finish would make a massive difference, but I'm not painting this either. Small objects, like this Warhammer miniature, just didn't want to work for me, no matter how much I tried, proving I guess that these scanners aren't great on small objects. So if miniatures or jewellery are your thing, I'm not sure it's worth looking at this scanner. And if something is too big for the turntable, then it's too big for table mode. But there is, of course, handheld mode. Here, rather than mount the scanner on a tripod, you need to slowly wave it around the contours of your large object. And I came unstuck here as I don't possess large ornaments. Even though I personally like big vases, big urns, and especially big jugs, we're just not that kind of household. And wherever I scan, it has to be near my PC, as I don't possess a laptop. Fortunately, my wife has this ornament, which is almost too big for the turntable, so we'll give it a go. Handheld is much trickier, I find. You're constantly watching the screen to determine if the target is out of sight, which invariably causes you to lose focus and move the scanner out of target sight. But with a little practice, it's possible. And again, here's the results. Now, yes, it's sitting on top of the turntable, but that was just for convenience. But the results are very good, I think. And again, it's not something that I could easily sculpt. If we look at the underside, you can see that it's sliced open, which I left deliberately to remind me about this point. The software is capable of doing much more than I've shown you on this video. Quite what? I really can't say, as many hours of self-tuition are required first. But I have found tools to allow me to trim away unwanted parts of the scan before final processing and exporting. So even if you scan in the tabletop, etc., you've got tools here to help you clean that up. One final topic to consider is that of accuracy. Maybe you want to scan something to add parts to, like a bracket or a coupling. If I had a laptop, I'd probably be scanning parts of my vehicle at this point for dramatic and striking comparison. But instead, I have... Winnie. If we examine the STL file using ZBrush, it tells me that at its highest point, Little Winnie is 93.28 millimeters tall. Now, if I grab my cheap calipers, I get a reading of, well, that's pretty impressive. It might not be micron accurate, and the way it's dealt with texture and minis suggests that it isn't, but I'd guess it's probably accurate enough 
for most home-based projects. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, tea. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, tea. Fog man. So what do I think of the Creality CR Scan Lizard? Well, I expected nothing but bad things, if I'm honest, as my own ignorance made me expect major headaches. I expected it to be difficult to use, and actually, it wasn't. I expected the software to be complex and difficult, but these big friendly buttons mean you can use it quickly with no prior knowledge at all. I expected the resulting scans to be poor and rough, but I'd be proud to say that I sculpted any of these pieces, so I can't agree with that. I expected major issues with colour and reflective surfaces, and yes, there's some issues there, but you may cure these with a matte-based finish, or else you could work around it with a little thoughtful repositioning. I expected the scanner to be unable to deal with small things, and that was the only occasion I proved myself right, although no doubt this will change as technology improves. And finally, I expected very little accuracy, and yet I was wrong there too. The only thing I haven't mentioned yet is price, and at the time of this review, it was a bad time to look as Black Friday deals were in place. So use the link in the description to check out current prices for yourself. But is it cheap? Not really. It's a sizable chunk of change for most average folks, I should think it's fair to say. But I do get the feeling there's a growing need for these sort of things out there. And if you're in the market for a home-grade 3D scanner, well, you tell me. Is it worth it? Only you can answer that. My personal closing thoughts on the CR Scan Lizard are these. It pleasantly surprised me. It's easy to use, produces surprisingly good results, and has an accuracy that should suit all but the most stringent necessities. So that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it useful. Take care, and thanks for watching.